Today's show is brought to you by Blinkist. Looking to polish up? Stay tuned for a special offer. Take a look at this poor old hatchet. It's been used and abused over the years, covered in rust, and lost most of its handle. Well, it's time to restore this old hatchet and give it a little upgrade. <laughs> The first step, as always, is disassembly, and there's only a couple of things on this old hatchet that need to be removed, mainly what's left of the handle, and I'll clip off these little leather loops. There was a couple of dozen of these that went all the way up and formed the actual handle and looked really good when it was brand new. And then there's a little oval end cap that's been peened on that holds all the little leather pieces in place nice and tight. That's gotta come off too. And then over to our trusty grinding wheel, where we'll grind off the ends of this cap and pop that cap off. It didn't want to leave the handle on its own, so a couple of little taps with my pliers. I know it's not a hammer, but it did the job and the cap is off. It's cleanup time, and that means removing the surface rust. I'll put the two parts in a glass pan and cover it with Metal Rescue and let it do its work. Now they're not paying me to say this, but Metal Rescue is my go-to rust remover. I've tried some of the other products and they don't do as good a job and Metal Rescue is chemical free and the other cool thing about it is that you can reuse this as long as the liquid doesn't get too dark, you can reuse it over and over again. So I've let this hatchet soak for about six hours and now it's time to take a look and it is looking pretty good. It looks like the majority of the rust is gone. I think a little metal brush to the head here. And yeah, that remaining rust is coming off pretty well, as well as the rust on the handle that was just kind of sticking around from laying in the soak. The other side of my grinder has a wire wheel and it's time to put that to use. It'll remove all of the remaining rust. and also start to give it a little bit of a shine. Now the next step is to really polish up this blade. But before we do that, let me ask you a question. Have you ever thought about polishing up on something you've been trying to learn? It just seems like we're being drawn in so many different directions with social media, video games, streaming video, all vying for our attention. So sometimes it's hard to learn new things or develop your talents. Well, the answer is Blinkist. Now imagine a condensed version of the most important information from thousands of non-fiction books that you can read or listen to in just 15 minutes. Blinkist has awesome content that's right in my wheelhouse from creativity to technology and everything in between, like a couple I've listened to, You Are Not a Gadget, and Where Will Man Take Us? Now I'm so confident that you'll love Blinkist that if you're one of the first 100 of my fans that go to Blinkist.com slash Kip K, you'll get unlimited access for an entire week for free to try out Blinkist. Oh, and you'll also get 25% off if you want the full membership. So head over to Blinkist.com slash Kip K or click the link in the description to check out Blinkist for one week free. Cancel anytime. So get the Blinkist app for your phone and start learning something new today. Now on to polishing our hatchet. I know this is going to take a little bit of work, so I'm going to use my electric sander and I'm going to start off with 80 grit paper and go over the entire hatchet head. After the 80, I'll go to 100 grit and then I'll go to 150 grit, just trying to get it uh, ready to shine up really nicely. Now I noticed that there's pitting on this uh, head of the hatchet, which I'm really not going to be able to do anything about because I don't want to get into grinding this head. So I'm just going to have to live with the small pits that are there, but we're going to try to make it shine as best we can. Then a wire wheel attachment on my drill bit. We'll get to those hard to reach places on the handle because the handle is inset. There's places that uh, my bench brush can't reach. Now it's time to put the elbow grease into action. Uh, a lot of elbow grease. I may even put grease on my elbow to add to the greasy elbow that I'm using to sand this by hand, starting with 80 grit, going to 100, going to 150, going to 220, 400, 800, 
1100 1500 2000 2500 and then 3000 for my final sandpaper grit to get a nice shine on this hatchet head and now the handle needs some treatment too and this was even more difficult because of all of the small inset areas on the handle but because I'm going to cover this handle I'm not being too crucial about making a big shine here. Once my hatchet is polished up it's time to sharpen it up and I'm going to be using this cool thing here the puck. It's kind of neat it's got two sides one is more coarse than the other side and you basically use it by starting with the coarse side we're going to go right to the edge of our blade and then using a circular motion rub it we're going to sharpen that edge then you flip it over and you use the less coarse side to give it a fine tuning and then lastly we'll use a leather strop which will align the edge, polish the blade, and then hone the edge to a higher level. And this blade is actually very sharp. So what about that end cap you've been asking about? Well, this thing is a little bit bent, so into the vise it goes where I'll tighten it up and straighten it out. And also, it needs to go to the wire wheel because there's still rust on here that needs to come off. This thing can shine up a little bit better. And after a couple of minutes, I actually revealed part of the S-Wing logo and the patent information that's on the bottom of this S-Wing hatchet. Also, the two original holes that were used to peen the ends, those need to be ground out, make those a little bit bigger so they'll fit right on the reassembly. Okay, hatchet head, get in that protected vise. It's comfy and cozy in there, don't worry. And you'll feel better when your end cap is on. We're gonna help to hold that in place by using some JB Weld Extreme Heat. This is a metal compound that you can grind and sand after it joins metal together. But I also peened in with a hammer the ends just a little bit just to make sure this thing is secure. Then it's time to apply the JB Weld using a popsicle stick. I'll apply a liberal amount and spread it nice and smoothly over the bottom of that end cap, making sure to fill in any little gaps that there may be. Then it's just a matter of waiting 24 hours for the JB Weld to harden and cure. Once that's done, then I can take some sandpaper to it. I was able to use 80 grit right off the bat, because this is a rough surface, and I smoothed it down pretty well. I wasn't worried about not seeing that S-Wing logo, especially since most of it was already gone. And now it's time for the handle grip. For the base of the handle, I'm gonna be using a piece of leather. Now I'll trace out the hatchet handle over the leather. Then I'll cut out each piece of leather, but I have to trim it a little bit tight on the inside because I want it to fit in the handle inset and not over the edges around the handle. Once I've got both pieces cut out and trimmed nicely, I will double check for fit. And then it's just a matter of securing this leather onto the handle. Now, it doesn't have to be super secure because you'll see in the next step what I do with the handle is gonna hold everything in place. So to hold the leather, I'll just use regular contact cement, apply some liberally onto the metal part of our hatchet handle, and then also apply some to our pieces of leather and then let them dry. Once my leather inserts are completely dry, it's time to complete the grip. And for that, I'm gonna be using paracord. This stuff is super versatile, strong, and with this color combination, I think it's gonna work out well with my hatchet. So I'll start by tying a knot at the very top of my hatchet handle, pulling it tight, and then flipping the handle over and tying another knot on the other side. Now this is called a West Country Whipping. This is the uh, type of wrap that I'm using. In order to do it right, you have to really be meticulous on tying the knots tightly, flipping over and continuing to tie the knots nice and tight and we'll work all the way down the hatchet handle till we get to the very bottom. And once we're there and complete our West Country whipping wrap, it's just a matter of cutting off the ends and singeing them with a little flame. That'll keep them from uncurling and then I'll just tuck them in at the bottom of the hatchet. This is an easy and effective wrap. I like the way it looks. The colors work well with the hatchet and it actually feels really good in the hand. It's a nice tight grip. 
So there you have it. What once was an old rusty hatchet with no handle now has a brand new life. It's shiny, it has a new grip, and it's ready to start chopping some wood. I had a great time restoring this hatchet and I hope you enjoyed it. Now, if you'd like to see some of my other Kip K restored projects, just click one of the links on the screen. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.